day's forecast. David, good morning. Yeah, good morning, guys. Hey Warm, muggy, kind of drizzly outside this morning. We're going to see that uh, really through Wednesday morning, and then we'll, oh my goodness, cool <laughs> down. It'll be nice later in the week. 66 degrees right now in Chattanooga. That's uh, pretty much the average high for this time of the year. You can see some rain uh, beginning to move through. You would think and hope that would be with a cold front, but not really. It's with a stationary front that's just kind of sitting on top of us right now. And with that, we'll see the rain picking up a little bit heavier. No severe weather this morning, but you may hear a rumble of thunder. Later this afternoon, we'll get up to 74 degrees. Not a great chance of showers and storms later today. All right, thank David, you, thanks. David. Let's go now to Michelle Heron with our top story this morning. Well, Jay Gray is live outside of Texas where that shooting happened over the weekend. He brings us the live details now. Good morning. Investigators say the congregation at the church just over my shoulder here was ambushed during their Sunday morning service by a lone gunman in tactical gear. In just minutes, this community of less than 500 shattered, leaving so many here, like investigators, now searching for answers. Families and friends continue to gather overnight. I've cried so much, I, I don't even have any tears left. There is an emptiness in this small Texas town, a gnawing pain. After 26 were killed, 10 or more wounded, gunned down during the Sunday morning service at Sutherland Springs First Baptist Church. It, it was rapid fire. It was just boom, 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 boom. The victims range in age from 5 to 72 years old. Killed investigators say when 26-year-old Devin Patrick Kelly burst through the front doors of the chapel and opened fire. He was dressed in, a, in, in all black, tactical type gear and was wearing a ballistic vest. Spraying the congregation with multiple rounds before turning to leave. Met outside by a resident who rushed to the scene with his rifle and returned fire. Kelly ran to his vehicle, Johnny Langendorf, following close behind. I did what I thought I needed to do, which was uh, they said that there was a shooting. I pursued. Police joined in, and after a brief chase, Kelly crashed. He was found dead inside. Records show he received a dishonorable discharge from the Air Force and jail time after he was convicted of assaulting his wife and their child. As investigators searched overnight for evidence and answers, this community searched for strength. I mean, the guy only brought us closer by doing this, and we're more unified now. It gives us reason to bring us even more together, and we will grow stronger. We will defeat this. Following the deadliest mass shooting in the history of the state. Now, overnight police searched Kelly's car as well as his home. To this point, though, they've said nothing publicly about any type of motive in the attack. That's the latest live here in Sutherland Springs. I'm Jay Gray. Back to you now. Now, coming up at 630, we'll have more from that Good Samaritan that helped police as well as reaction from the president. He spoke on this shooting from Japan overnight. But for now, I'm Michelle Heron, Channel 3 Eyewitness News. So incredibly sad. Thank you, Michelle. Happening today, the trial for four former top executives of the pilot Flying J truck stop chain is expected to begin. In 2013, federal agents raided the family-owned company's headquarters in Knoxville. So far, 14 former members of the sales team have pleaded guilty to a scheme to rip off customers by not giving them fuel rebates. Jimmy Haslam, pilot CEO, has agreed to an $85 million settlement and a $92 million government penalty. Penalty. Walker County residents will decide whether to increase the sales tax tomorrow. Now ahead of the vote, Sole Commissioner Shannon Whitfield will be holding a Facebook Live session tonight at 6 o'clock to answer questions. It's going to take place on the Walker County government's official Facebook page. The proposal calls for a 1% sales tax increase to fund transportation projects like road paving. Well, if you're able to get out and about this weekend, some beautiful oh leaves gosh, out there. Really nice. You had some nice photos. Oh man, Mon Eagle, it was it uh, its peak right now. And David, you said you were in North Georgia, kind of past. Well, yeah, season. I think I think uh, plus they've had a little bit more rain and yeah. recent storm. I think knocked a lot, a lot of the leaves out of the trees. But uh, yeah, the color that was there was beautiful. 
and my goodness, yeah, get out there next next weekend if you can, because mm -hmm. I don't think it's going to last much longer. Uh, fog visibility outside, a little bit of fog up toward Murphy, but really uh, not that bad. Do have some overcast skies and a couple of drizzles as we move through the Tennessee Valley. I think we may hear a couple of rumbles of thunder, maybe get a little bit heavier rainfall moving through the next few hours. And Viper cast showing after this morning, rain chance really diminishes down to 10, 20% for the afternoon and the evening hours, but it will stay warm and overcast. 74 today, 75 tomorrow, and then a nice cool down later in the weekend, into the weekend. We're going to have all the details on that coming up in just a few minutes, guys. A little bit of everything, David. Thanks so much. Uh -huh. Checking on traffic this Monday morning. Things looking pretty good in and around the Tennessee Valley. No accidents to report. That's 75 at East Brainerd Road. Obviously, still dark. That's about the only thing going on. We'll keep you updated right here on Channel 3. It was a big weekend for the SEC, and one team already has their spot in the championship game. Jill Jelnick has the details, plus a look at the Vols' win in this morning's Top Sports Headlines. The SEC championship is still a month away, but as of this weekend, the Georgia Bulldogs have already punched their ticket to the big dance. Thanks to Saturday's win over South Carolina and a little help from Ole Miss, the Bulldogs have clinched the SEC East title for the first time since 2012. Georgia improved to 9-0 overall and 6-0 in SEC play, while every other East member has at least three league losses. As to who the Dogs will play in the SEC championship game, that is still up in the air. Alabama is the obvious favorite to win the West, but 14th ranked Auburn is still a contender who just so happens to be Georgia's next opponent this upcoming Saturday. Meanwhile, over on Rocky Top this weekend, it was homecoming for the volunteers. And what better way to celebrate than snapping a four-game losing streak? Tennessee took care of business against Southern Miss, improving to four and five on the season. Junior tailback John Kelly ran for two scores, while freshman quarterback Jarrett Garantano added another. Garantano, though, was taken out at halftime due to an ankle injury and freshman backup Will McBride finished the night. Despite the adversity during the game, as well as all the drama this past week, the Vols still found a way to close out on the win. Tennessee will now get ready for their game against Missouri this upcoming weekend. All right, that's it for sports. I'm Jill Jelnick. I hope you have a magnificent Monday. All right, all right. Kansas City Chiefs star uh, tight end Travis Kelsey may be in the running for celebration of the year after his performance yesterday. Look at this. A touchdown by Kelsey in the third quarter gave his Chiefs the lead over the Broncos. And then the sack race. <laughs> Look at the sack race. Oh, and he victorious. wins the sack. Wow. Wow. What an impressive performance. The Chiefs, man, uh, was not victorious overall, but they are having fun playing football. Yeah. Uh, the Titans. Coming through, looking yeah. good yesterday. Big win there. Big win there. Uh, fantasy teams, not so good. <laughs> Coming up on Eyewitness News today, you might have spent the weekend looking at the rainbow of colors on trees. They were beautiful, yeah. but huh? you also need to be looking to the sky for another fall show. We will explain coming up in just a bit. Plus, Chattanooga police are investigating the city's latest homicide. We went about 60 days without a deadly shooting in this city. We're taking a look at the numbers coming up after the break.
with coverage you can count on. This is Channel 3 Eyewitness News Today. It was a big weekend here in Chattanooga. Thousands of athletes from all over competed in the Head of the Hooch competition. Mario Milak is on the Club Nautico of San Juan's team. He says preparing for the competition has been tough. The water where the team normally practices is contaminated, so they've only been able to train on land. But he says competing in the Head of the Hooch helped take his mind off of the devastation at home. You just lose focus on everything else, just focus on rowing. Uh, and it just takes out the stress. He came in fifth place in the singles competition. The team will be heading back to Puerto Rico this week. 47 days after Hurricane Maria, more than 60% of the island is still without power. While you're out looking at fall colors, Nature's is putting on another spectacular display, the migration of thousands of hawks. Five species migrate through the Tennessee Valley. This typically ends during November, but this year it may be longer. Bill Haley started the Hawk Watch on Saudi Mountain more than 25 years ago. He says the hawks are late risers and well, he says they're honestly lazy uh, to view these birds. You don't have to get up before 10. The hawks wake up and they say, oh, the air is too heavy today. I'm not going to fly today. Animal. The broad-winged hawk will actually travel for hundreds of miles in a day without ever flapping its wings. We have much more on when is the best time to see the hawks inside the WRCB app. We'd love to see your pictures as well and the fall colors. Send them all to PIX, P-I-X, at WRCBTV.com. Still to come on Eyewitness News today, we'll check in with David Carnes. He'll have a full look at the forecast and tell us when we can expect to see some cooler temperatures. Plus, we're going to let you know if there are any problems on your Monday morning commute. The time is 613. We'll be right back. Channel 3 Eyewitness News traffic sponsored by CHI Memorial, ranked number one in the Chattanooga area by U.S. News. We thank our staff, physicians, and volunteers for their service to our patients and community. Happy Monday, everybody. Quarter after 6 o'clock as so we check traffic for you. 153 going over the dam. Beautiful shot. Clear morning on the roads. Uh, no accidents. David, a couple of drizzles in and around the Tennessee Valley, but nothing uh, that's going to slow you down too much. Yeah, John, you're absolutely right. Uh, just be, be aware we're going to see the rain. I think picking up a little bit uh, later in the morning right now. Not that bad out there. Holly in downtown camera. It is just kind of warm, muggy, a little drizzly, maybe even a couple of scattered storms as we move through the morning. And we're going to keep the clouds, the warm weather, the drizzles on and off through the first half of the week. I think after Wednesday morning, we're going to see it clearing out and cooling down big time Wednesday afternoon into Thursday, Friday and the weekend. Right now we're in the 60s, though, 60, 66 in Chattanooga. 66 in Cleveland. Hard to remember that it's November. All of the screen representing just again a few light drizzles sporadically spread throughout the Tennessee Valley. This is the heavier rain that we may see moving through again a rumble of thunder or two a possibility as that heavier rain drifts through a little later this morning within the next couple of hours.
showers. Uh, Vipercast showing this afternoon that front becoming stationary that's producing the showers and oh, uh, it will continue to produce a lot of cloud cover. Very little in the way of rain this afternoon. The rain chance will drop to only about 10% later this afternoon and into tonight. And then tomorrow, an area of low pressure along that boundary is going to work its way through, bringing in a little more widespread coverage of showers and thunderstorms for your commute on Tuesday morning. But then again, just like today, Tuesday afternoon, that boundary will produce clouds and just a few spotty showers here and there. So best chances of rain today and tomorrow are going to be during the morning hours. But even in the afternoon, we just can't completely rule it out. So we'll put the rain chance for the afternoon hours at 10 to 20% both today and Tuesday. And then Wednesday, we'll see that front finally sliding southward. Maybe a drizzle or two early Wednesday morning, but by Wednesday noon through the afternoon, the cooler air and the drier air will really begin to settle in. And that'll be the case through Thursday into Friday and Saturday. Also, just much cooler air moving in. You'll actually need your jackets once again. Rainfall. Ahead of that cool air, yeah, we could see anywhere from a half an inch to three quarters of an inch of rain. Pretty widespread today, though, just warm with a few spotty showers and maybe some storms this morning moving through 74 degrees. The high in Chattanooga, low 70s, pretty widespread mid to upper 60s in the mountains. Tonight will drop down to 64 in Chattanooga, overcast, mild, very slight chance of an isolated sprinkle overnight into uh, the tomorrow morning. And then tomorrow around drive time is when we'll see more widespread showers and thunderstorms moving through on Tuesday. Tuesday uh, overnight we will drop down into the 60s pretty widespread getting up to 75 tomorrow afternoon and then take a look at Wednesday 54 the low much cooler than this morning or tomorrow morning 54 and then we'll only warm up to 58 heading through the day so much cooler heading into Wednesday take a look at Thursday a low of 50 a high of 60 love it and then you'll uh, need to grab the coats on Friday morning 43 degrees the low 42 on Saturday morning highs will be in the low 60s so finally some good fall weather. Average high is 67 degrees. We'll actually be below that toward the end of the week. See, I don't mind the slowly dipping your foot into it as opposed <laughs> yeah, to just totally. cannonball just it. Yeah, 70 it. degrees, yeah. it's below 10. <laughs> yeah. You don't want that. All right, David, thanks so much. Well, this morning, police are investigating Chattanooga's latest homicide. It is the first deadly shooting since August. Channel 3's Tim Pham is live. He is following the latest developments in this case. And Tim, what leads do police have right now? Lori, we do know that police are questioning a person of interest, but we're told that no one has been arrested or charged at this time. So this morning, there's still a lot of questions about what happened in this deadly shooting. As you mentioned, this is the latest homicide in Chattanooga in about 70 days, and police and investigators are trying to piece together what exactly happened on Baldwin Street. It happened around 7 o'clock on Sunday night, and we're told that it was actually firefighters that were, sp were responding to the scene to an unconscious man. Um, when they arrived at that location, they say that the person was uh, not responsive and suffering from a gunshot wound and police determined that the person uh, was, he was pronounced dead at the scene. Right now, they're still trying to figure out what exactly happened and trying to piece together um, who could be responsible. If you have any information, give Chattanooga Police a phone call. Their homicide tip line is uh, 643-5100. As soon as we learn more information, we'll be sure to pass it along to you. Live in Chattanooga, Tim Pham, Channel 3 Eyewitness News. All right, Tim, thank you for that update. A second shooting happened around 9 o'clock last night on McBrien Road. That person was taken to the hospital and is expected to be okay. East Ridge Assistant Police Chief Stan Allen tells Channel 3 the victim drove to Ringgold Road in East Ridge to report what had happened. If you have any information about either of these cases, contact police. In Bradley County, investigators are looking into what led to a police chase that ended with four people being detained. This is a picture of the end of the chase taken by a Channel 3 viewer. Officials with the Bradley County Sheriff's Office say a deputy tried to pull a car over on North Ocoee Street. The car took off and deputies were able to stop the driver after a few blocks. Coming up on Eyewitness News today, we're going to head to Sewanee in this week's Three in Your Town and look back at the football season. Folks are still talking about more than 100 years later. I look forward to that. But first, here's a look outside with our View Apartments camera. A nice looking morning. Some of you are seeing some showers out there. Nothing too bad on the roads, but uh, Don's keeping an eye on that. We'll be right back. Here.
College football has a rich history in Tennessee, but just about everyone will agree that it's been a down year across the volunteer state. So in this week's three in your town, we take a look back at one of the most remarkable football teams in the history of college sports. And no, they don't play at Neyland, but rather on top of the Cumberland Plateau. You're here on a beautiful homecoming day. The trees are out. It's just, it's a gorgeous place to be today. Sewanee, the University of the South is a small mid-Tennessee Episcopal University. Its tight-knit community makes it the kind of place some never leave and most never stop loving. On this Saturday in November, the alumni have come back to watch their Division III Tigers take on the Center College Colonels from Danville, Kentucky. Football might not be the most celebrated extracurricular activity on campus now. To this day, the University of the South holds the title as having the best team in college football history. If people around here still talk about the 1899 football team, which was a, a it, it certainly marks a special spot in the history and the lore of Sewanee athletics or the University of the South and in college football. The Tigers of 1899 win a perfect 12-0. In fact, the team only gave up a total of 10 points the entire season, all of which came in an 11 to 10 victory over the Auburn Tigers. And I, and I will mention this for what it's worth, we do have a winning record against Auburn University, six and three, and we'll hold that record because we're never ever gonna play Auburn again. But the title best team in college football history wasn't just earned from their near shutout record, but for an improbable road trip where the Tigers boarded a train and played five games in just six days. Five games in six days from Texas to Louisiana to Mississippi, Memphis, and come back. And, uh, and we came back undefeated, which was absolutely remarkable, something that will never, ever happen again. It was a mid-season train ride into the history books. The small liberal arts school on the Cumberland Plateau became the greatest team in college football history. It's a really cool history up there on Sewanee, and I, this was actually really, really random. I'm up there shooting that story on Saturday, talking to Mark Webb, the director of athletics, and uh, and he says, oh, and by the way, ESPN's here doing the same story you are. And How I was that? like, oh, that's terrible news, because it's <laughs> going to be so much better. No, but uh, two years from now, they're going to do that. Uh, Sewanee, also one of the uh, founding teams of the SEC. So ESPN is kind of doing a look back at where are they now, um, Tulane also, and a couple Southwestern, a few other schools. What a great like history lesson for us this so, morning, yeah. and just to see the list of schools that they've been. I know, North Huge Carolina, team. Texas yeah. A&M, Texas is a really cool, uh, cool place. Good job, that was nice. Well, it's time now to take a look at our birthday salutes. We want to say happy 16th birthday to Hannah Van Winkle. She's a 10th grader at Saudi Daisy High School, and congratulations. You're at Bojangles. Hey, here. and happy birthday to Mary Morris turning 69 years young. She's a volunteer with the Foster Grandparent Program here in Chattanooga. Also celebrating is Carlin Eaton. She too is a volunteer with the Foster Grandparent Program and she's 75 years old today. And happy birthday to Larciana Custer, also a volunteer with the Foster Grandparent Program, 67 years old today. Happy birthday to Irita Schrader. She's turning four years old. Look, hey. at, look at that cutie. Oh, come on. Sorry, I just looked up. That is that is, that is is really adorable. And a big salute this morning to Peyton Worley, celebrating her 10th birthday. We hope each and every one of you have an absolutely magnificent Monday and a very happy birthday.
Good morning and uh, boy, what a mild start to our week, right? Temperatures in the 60s this morning, cloudy, a few drizzles out there. We're going to get up to 74 this afternoon. Still a chance of a shower or two this afternoon as well. We're going to keep the same pattern in Tuesday uh, morning. We'll see some more showers and thunderstorms moving through. Might be a wet commute tomorrow morning and then a few isolated sprinkles lingering into Tuesday afternoon and Wednesday morning. And then we dry out and a significant cool down toward the end of the week and into the weekend. With coverage you can count on, this is Channel 3 Eyewitness News Today. Somebody would decide of all places this small little church. Why this church?